conduct the Pleiadian mission a time of awareness part 15. The Talmud of Emmanuel. It wasn't until 1963 that the Pleiadians led a Greek Catholic priest named Rashid, to the site where the scrolls were buried. The writings had been placed into resin and were kept in a crystal-like box given to Emmanuel by his father, Gabriel, when he was young, just for this purpose. Written in old Aramaic script, the scrolls were found under the flat rock where they had been hidden almost 2,000 years earlier by Emmanuel's son, Joseph. Rashid began translating the scrolls from Aramaic into German and making copies, for he knew it would be his job to bring them to the world. The scrolls were long and contained over 120 chapters of information. So far he had only sent 36 of them to Billy in Switzerland. Hiding out in Baghdad with his family, the good priest was being followed by assassins from both the Christian and Jewish faiths. Fleeing for his life to Lebanon, he camped there with his family in a refugee camp. But he and his family were found by the Jewish military, who attacked the camp and slaughtered most of the refugees. Barely escaping the massacre with his family, he fled into the night, at the cost of losing the scrolls. Shortly afterward, the priest and his family were murdered by a terrorist gang who machine gunned them down in hatred and anger. Only the 36 chapters which he had translated survived, the fate of the original scrolls is unknown. They have been translated into English, and today are available in a small book called the Talmud of Emmanuel. Published by Wildflower Press in America, it also comes with a companion book called Celestial Teachings, written by Dr. James Deerdorf, a Christian historian. This book is the result of six years of study on the Talmud of Emmanuel to determine its validity. The Lord's Prayer In school and in church most of us learn the Lord's Prayer. In the Talmud of Emmanuel we read it in a slightly different way. Emmanuel was trying to teach those around him how to become aware of the Spirit within us and our connection to creation. No one understood the concept of meditation that he was trying to teach them, but instead they thought it was a prayer to God to help them. Being misunderstood, the Lord's Prayer was written down in the Talmud of Emmanuel the way that Emmanuel had first spoken and taught it to his disciples. It was a meditation called My Spirit. Here is the Lord's Prayer in its original form, taken from the Talmud of Emmanuel, the original writings of Emmanuel. Reprinted with My Spirit. Also known as the Lord's Prayer. My Spirit, you are omnipotent, your name is holy. May your kingdom be incarnate in me. May your power reveal itself within me, on earth and in the heavens. Give me today my daily bread, and thus let me recognize my sins, and I shall recognize the truth. Do not lead me into temptation and confusion, but deliver me from error, for yours is the kingdom within me and the power and knowledge forever. Amen. The Mysteries of Earth The Pleiadian contacts in Switzerland continued for almost three years, during this time they answered many questions put to them by Billy, members of the FIGU, his friends, and family members. Centered around the many unexplainable events of Earth's history, most of the answers provide an insight into our past that does not appear anywhere in our school books. I'm sure if given the opportunity, most of us would ask many of the same questions about the mysteries of Earth. What is the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle? A mystery that has long plagued us is the strange disappearance of ships and planes in the area known as the Bermuda Triangle. Many books have been written on the subject, offering a variety of theories on the unexplainable disappearances of ships, planes, and people. It has even been suggested by some that the peculiar events surrounding the Bermuda Triangle may be caused by ETs, Satan, or some other dark force. To the Pleiadians, the events in the triangle are not caused by any extraterrestrial influence. As a matter of fact, even ET ships have been affected by the phenomena from time to time. As far as the Pleiadians are concerned, the events of the Bermuda Triangle are quite logically explained. Actually, there have been three different places on the planet Earth where similar effects have occurred. Old pirate stories have done much to lend an aura of intrigue and mystery to the subject. The area called the Bermuda Triangle is part of the old continent of Atlantis, which extended from the west coast of Africa all the way to the east coast of South America, and northward to the area where Florida is now. It is in this location that the descendants of this lost continent still live, in a base far beneath the sea. They are quite peaceful, 
and do not represent a threat to the surface world of Earth. They have ships capable of underwater travel and interstellar flight, and have been seen entering and leaving the water on occasion. But this is not the cause of the strange disappearances. There exists in the Triangle, as well as off the coast of Japan and Madagascar, what you might call a dimensional door to a parallel universe. In an effort to explain it, the Pleiadians took Billy into the parallel universe so he could see for himself. As the ship entered the dimensional door, Billy noticed that he could see our present time Earth behind the ship, and in front of him he could see the parallel universe with three Earths looming into view. It was necessary to make the trip in one of the more advanced Pleiadian craft because the small beam ships would not be capable of returning. It was explained that the dimensional doors are caused by the effect of two giant suns located 720 light years from our Earth. Certain high energy radiations from these two giant bodies occasionally come together at certain points on our planet. When their energies cross, it forms a rip or tear in the fabric of time, causing unpredictable results wherever the rip occurs. Since the Earth is moving, this radiation most commonly hits the planet in three different locations the Bermuda Triangle, off the coast of Japan, and near to Madagascar. This only occurs at that time when the Earth moves into the focus of this wandering radiation. This crossing of energy serves to open a dimensional door to the parallel universes. This effect is erratic and unpredictable and disturbs the magnetic energy in the area for a short time. On many occasions in the past, it has caused the floor of the ocean to rise up and appear as an island for an hour or so. Ships in the night have run aground, only to be pulled down when the ocean floor sinks. Airplanes have flown into this dimensional door, which acts like a cyclone, and they have found themselves displaced in time forever. In most cases, ships and places that have entered these areas slip forward in time and will probably reappear in the near future. In the parallel universe, entered through the Bermuda Triangle, there exist three Earths, caused by an accident 3,500 years ago when the planet Venus came too close to the Earth, disturbing the harmony of both of the dimensions and the two planets closest to the Sun, Mercury and Earth. A rip or tear in time resulted and caused two different Earths from different time epochs to be pulled into the dimension of the future planet. Because of this, there are three planets now existing in our parallel universe the ancient prehistoric Earth, a newly formed Earth which is still covered in gas, and a third future Earth, existing as we know it in the present. These three planets are close together, and they can be seen by the human eye at the same time. The future Earth is approximately 500 years in advance of us. A society has developed there with space travel abilities, which has led to cities on the moon and beyond. The Pleiadians are careful not to let themselves be known to this future society, for they regard them as still too aggressive to get along with. It is interesting to note, though, that 500 years into our future some form of our society does till exist. With all of the drama of survival here on Earth today, our future is certainly in question. The prehistoric Earth is one which existed at the time of the dinosaurs. This was the state of the second planet, a prehistoric world with no sign of human life. Billy was so intrigued with the dinosaurs on the planet that he talked some Jace into letting him get out of the ship and touch one while it had been temporarily paralyzed by her technology. He even took a couple of pictures which, oddly enough, show a dinosaur with a large pyramid in the background. This seems very unusual since man did not exist on Earth when the dinosaurs roamed the Earth, so who built them? The third planet Earth is one which is only just now forming from gas into solid matter, and represents the very beginnings of our present-day planet. Not yet in solid form, it presented little or no interesting features and was not explored. Earth has since moved out of the position where it is affected by the crossing of the strange radiations from the giant suns, so the dimensional doors should be closed forever. Because of this, we should not be plagued with any more disappearances or strange stories from this area at least the ones caused by this strange energy. It should be noted, though, that the area of the Bermuda Triangle is known for its sudden storms that can still cause problems, but these storms do not have the capability to move objects in time or interfere with the magnetic forces of the planet. Who was the warrior called Quetzalcoatl? He was a very high-ranking officer of an extraterrestrial group that was exercising control over Egypt for a short time. 
He was wise and kind and was often sent on special missions. One of the missions took him to South America, where he was praised as a god by the Aztecs. He came into contact with Huitzil Pochli, a leader of the Giza people, who led the Aztecs into creating the ritual of human blood sacrifices. Quetzalcoatl was against these rituals and a bitter feud developed for power. In the end Huitzil Pochli was able to drive Quetzalcoatl out, forcing his return to Egypt. Are there ETs living under Mount Shasta in California? Today, under a mountain in Northern California, there exists a race of extraterrestrials called Hyperboreans. This mountain is called Mount Shasta. The entrance to their city is high on the eastern side of the mountain and inaccessible to us. Their ships are golden color and are sometimes seen entering or leaving the mountain. They are white-skinned people who usually have long, curly, blonde hair. They sometimes come out of the mountain to local towns, but are very shy toward earth people. They are the descendants of the ancient Hyperboreans who came to earth over 30,000 years ago. What is the purpose of an ice age? Known to us as a glacial period, this is a natural event in the development of the planet. We have to accept the fact that the planet is living entity, and it must evolve just as we must. Since it does not reach for perfection as we do or go through periods of material life and non-material life, sleeping, it has its own way of evolving. This is done through an event called an ice age, or glacial period. This is a natural process, covering entire regions or even the entire planet with ice. Temperatures fall, and changes occur in atmospheric pressure. As a planet ages, the amount of ice subsides ice ages occur in rhythmic patterns in accordance with the size and type of planet. The time of an ice age can be determined by simple mathematics. On Earth, this cycle lasts about 700,000 years, which means that every 700,000 years a certain region of Earth will fall into an ice age and cover from one sixth to one quarter of the entire surface of the planet. The periods in between are interglacial periods, where from one tenth to one twelfth of the Earth will be covered. We have had four glacial periods in the last three million years, and we are only 150,000 years away from the next interglacial period and 550,000 years from another great glacial period. All forms of creation go through a process of waking and sleeping. The Earth is no exception. As the Earth has become more evolved, less area of the planet is covered in ice, sleeping, because this would damage some of the other life forms on it. This ice age, or sleeping period, serves as an evolution time for the plants, animals, and humans. This means that a beautiful flower changes into a still more beautiful one. Animals also evolve, for instance, the prehistoric mammoth has become the elephant. The ozone problem. For many years the Pleiadians have controlled the dangerous effects we have caused by our irresponsibility toward nature. Many different chemicals are discharged into the atmosphere, including bromine gas, which slowly dissolve the ozone layer. As early as 1975 they informed us that the ozone layer is 6.38% affected and destroyed. This began 60 years earlier. It allows ultraviolet radiation into the atmosphere, affecting all creatures. There are currently three different areas where the danger exists. Bromine gas is not the only source of the problem. Our scientists are aware that explosion motors and matter-destroying processes of other sorts, including atom-splitting devices, also contribute to the problem. Since 1945 the problem has increased greatly, due to the splitting of the atom. Some governments have designed missiles that release bromine gas into the atmosphere as a weapon, stupidly thinking that such an action would be harmless to their own country. To close these ozone holes may take hundreds of years. The problem looks worse when we realize that the holes can wander. The splitting of the atom is also a far greater danger than we realize. Setting atomic energies free through the use of nuclear plants, atomic testing, and explosion motors releases electrical energies at very high frequencies. This is not to be confused with what we think of as electricity. It's a different kind of energy that affects the ultraviolet radiation field, which our scientists are not aware of yet. Normally, this energy mingles with oxygen to generate huge quantities of ozone. Normally, there is one part ozone to 500,000 parts air. When an explosion occurs due to atom splitting, the ozone value increases to 28 parts. 
these dangerous energies then destroy in many varieties of microorganisms important to the preservation of all earthly life. The ozone value then decreases very rapidly. The effects of these energies can continue for hundreds of years. Atomic explosions also affect the Van Allen belt by disturbing the electrons and photons important to the function of Earth life. The belt exists at a height of 620 miles and consists of charged particles in constant motion, traveling in a spiral-like course from pole to pole. The problem is worse today, just as predicted. Try to educate yourself about this problem and make your voice heard. We are in serious danger. Who built the statues on Easter Island? The occurrences on Easter Island are connected to the city of Tiwanaku, a pre-Incan culture that existed 300 BC to 900 AD, chiefly in Peru and Bolivia. Even though they are more than 3,000 miles apart, they were ruled by the same leader and represent the last colonization of ETs in this area around 13,000 years ago. Out of this group came a semi-ishwish leader named Baraka Koha, who was very greedy for power. He conquered T.O. 12,000-foot-high city of Tiwanaku and then settled on a small island in an or Easter island called Mo, which means bird in the old language. He and his followers were lyrans with giant bodies, around 30 feet tall. They taught the local natives how to use their highly developed machines, which were then used by the natives, out of tribute, to construct the statues we see today on Easter Island. Similar events also happened in Peru near the cities of Pisco, Nazca, and Sacsayhuaman. On lava walls on Easter Island there are reproductions of spaceships that were made by the local people who lived there. These were attempts at telling the story of Varaco Koha and his reign over them. After several thousand years, the giants suddenly became ill from disease and fled Earth in their ships, taking all their technology with them. Where they landed is not known. It is presumed they died in their ships. Many of the statues were never finished. The natives tried finishing them with primitive stones and failed. They apparently tried to get the gods back by finishing the statues with red hats made from clay from a local volcano. The Pleiadians have been able to ascertain that the giants were somehow in contact with a race of humans in Andromeda, prompting an expedition by the Andromedans to Earth 2568 years ago. These humans from Andromeda were around 5 foot 10 inches tall. They stayed for 20 years and 7 months, building up an advanced culture. They are responsible for constructing the Nazca lines, half-tube channels that protect electrical energy centers buried in the ground. The Andromedans could not acclimate themselves to the earthly atmosphere and were forced to leave in order to save their lives. Who were the giants and gods of Greek mythology? Over the years, Many races of titans have colonized many parts of the world. Some of the ancient Lyrans who came to Earth were 25 to 35 feet tall. Many of the Greek gods were among these. Hercules was over 10 feet 11. He and many of the Greek gods were descendants of the Hyperboreans. Noah was around 12 feet tall, and Adam was almost 16 feet tall. The great god of the Sumerians, Gilgamesh, was more than 24 feet tall. Many of our ancestors were giants who, by interbreeding and adjusting to our atmosphere, have become smaller. Ancient dwarf races are likewise becoming larger as they evolve. After adjusting to their planet, the present-day Pleiadians, whose ancestors were also giants, are about the same size as we are. The Three Great Pyramids The age of the pyramids has always puzzled the historians and science ISDS because the clues left behind for examination are confusing. The Great Pyramid of Giza, sometimes called Cheops or Giza Pyramid, stands just south of Cairo on a great plateau of land along with two other pyramids, which are smaller and built at different times by different techniques. The Great Pyramid or Giza Pyramid as it is called, covers 13 acres, using 6.5 million tons of stone, and stands 481 feet tall with its capstone in place. It was built 73,300 years prior to 1956 at a time when the constellation Ross stood in the star sign of Cancer. At the time the Giza pyramid was built, there were also two other pyramids built of the same design and for the same purpose. One of them is in China and is buried deep under the ground, it may not be discovered for some time. There is also another one somewhere in South America that is just below the surface of the ground, it may be discovered sometime soon. 
the pyramids were built by a group of Lyrans who designed them for their own needs. When this race vanished, the Great Pyramid stood uncared for and ignored for many years. It wasn't until 300 years before the Great Flood that once again the pyramid was of interest. By the way, the Great Flood is incorrectly thought to be around 9,000 years ago, but Pleiadian information tells us that it was really in the year 8104 b. 0. It was during this time that there lived a king, named Saluk, who had a son named Sorad, who had the gift of seeing the future and often informed his father of events that would come to pass. Sorad had a dream that a great planet would come dangerously close to the earth, causing tremendous noise and darkness. Earth would be thrown into great upheavals of water, avalanches, and darkness. The loss of life would be great. Sorad told his father of his dream and of the consequences of it. Knowing his son had a great gift of vision, the wise king counseled with his scientists to verify the time this event would happen. It was discovered that a great comet was indeed going to come very close to the earth, causing the events of the dream to happen in about 300 years. It was decided to warn the people of the future by leaving a message on the pyramid. By order of the king, the story of the dream was handed down from one king after another, who all prepared the pyramid as a place of refuge. Lime mortar was used to cover the pyramid so that it would be safe from the water. Once the mortar had sealed the entire pyramid, the story of the dream was pressed into the side of the pyramid, so the people of the future could not miss it. When the time came and the great destroyer comet was approaching Earth, the people took heed and went into the pyramid for shelter. The events of the dream came true, for the comet turned the Earth on its axis and caused great flooding and destruction all over the planet. The area of Egypt was flooded and was under water for several years. Most of the people of Earth were killed, and only a few managed to survive in the large underground caverns that had been hollowed out under the pyramid. Thousands of people were able to live for many years in the subterranean world until the water subsided. Once again the pyramid had served a useful purpose. Historians have been misled by the material which covers the surface of the pyramid and by documents and writings which tell of the pyramid being built by the Egyptians. It was built by the ancient sons and daughters of the heavenly sons, the star travelers, who are the essential settlers of this world. The Egyptians have only remodeled the pyramid on several occasions for their own needs. The ancient heavenly sons who built the pyramids were well informed about the future of earth including the future which still faces us in this century. Because of their great knowledge, the Pyramid of Giza was built with a mathematical ability to tell us about coming events particularly events which will affect us from outer space. The changing position of Earth and its axis was even taken into consideration, for they felt the need to let us know about certain events to come, including the fate of the Earth. A prophecy was built into the Pyramid to warn those in the future. The exact time of the event of cosmic destruction is when the solar light of the central sun of the Milky Way, as well as the light of our own solar sun, falls through the tube-like opening which reaches from the outside of the Giza pyramid to the center in a straight, uninterrupted line and shines on one particular point. More was not told about this, for only those with the ability to unravel and figure out the math would be allowed to know the exact date of the cosmic event. The idea is that if you do not have the wisdom to solve a puzzle or riddle, then you are probably not ready to be responsible with the answer. Are there ETs living under the Great Pyramid? A group of extraterrestrials originally called the Bafath came from E far regions of the Ring Nebula. They are the ancestors of the Lesser Arisim, who was exiled around 3,300 years ago with 72,000 of his followers. They secretly returned to Earth and hid under the Giza Plateau which supports the Great Cheops Pyramid. The Great Pyramid had been built by their Lyran ancestors about 73,475 years ago. At the time, it served as the top of a small underground city where they lived. The Bafath creatures are a wicked group who would like to rule the Earth. For almost 2,000 years they have tried to take over the Earth by controlling the minds of religious and political leaders through telepathic means. For many years the Bafath have controlled many religious leaders, causing confusion and wars among the people. They have also caused illusions of religious saints to come into the minds of people, causing them to fall further into delusion and illogical thinking. The Bafath caused the Waldport, Oregon incident in September of 1975, where people were giving up their worldly possessions to leave Earth in a spaceship. 
they were told the end of the earth was near and that they could be saved. After the Pleiadians became aware of the interference of the Baathath and their control over the people of Waldport, they intervened and brought the incident to an end. An American named Reinhold Schmidt was controlled telepathically by the Baathath to believe he had been in the pyramid to see the crucifixion tools. He also was fooled into thinking that he had a ride in a spaceship to the Arctic. This was all illusion, caused by telepathy, to control the poor man. He is not lying because he actually believes it to be true. During the year 1976, 723 persons were under the telepathic control of the Baathath. After causing many problems for the Pleiadians during their mission to Earth, it was decided to remove the Baathath from Earth, so they would not be able to cause any more problems for the people here. They were captured and placed on other worlds. One of the Pleiadian leaders, named Ta, also affected their spirit forms in some fashion, so they would not be able to reincarnate for several thousand years. This will, in effect, ensure that they can no longer interfere in the affairs of Earth. Was Adolf Hitler influenced by ETs? The Pleiadians say that Adolf Hitler was born a person of very great worth. He was not spiritually advanced, but was of very high intelligence. He was destined to bring great change to the world through his intellect. Through the Thule Society in Germany, the Baathath were able to seize possession of Adolf and to use him for their dark and evil purposes, something he could not defend himself against. Many around him were also controlled. Hitler became convinced that he was doing the right thing for Earth, and set out to create a master race that would bring the world to new heights of civilization. His out-of-control ego and desire for power made him easy prey for the implanted thoughts of the Baathath. The world came to hate him, without really understanding what had happened. Is there really an E.T. named Ashtar? Kamigal was an evil leader of the Baathath. In 1937 a commander of his named Arusik, known to some as Ashtar Sharon, fled the tyranny of his rule in his own personal effort to know the truth. He and his men left the earth to get away from the power of Kamigal and make a better life for themselves. Since the Baathath are no longer on earth and Kamigal has passed away, it has been safe for Ashtar to make contact with some of those on earth. He sends information to the minds of many earth people, but is not really informed of the truth himself. We must be careful with his information, since he still uses the tactics of the Baathath by appealing to those who are seeking a god to worship, using the same methods as his former leaders, he will quite often control earth people by pretending that Jesus is with him in his ship and is working for earth. This is very unfortunate, for many people of earth prefer to believe in the teachings of Jesus, and they are being led astray by the deceptive teachings of Ashtar. There are too many incidents of ETs easily taking advantage of the mindset here on earth. Who are the blue race? There is a blue-skinned race of people, who for many years have kept of themselves and lived in subterranean cities. This race has two underground cities, one in France and one in Asia, and rarely come to the surface. They have been seen on many occasions in India. They are very peaceful and pose no threat to our society, for they are not interested in us except for the fact that we may cause the destruction of the planet. What is the destroyer comet? In ancient Lyran history they speak of a destroyer comet that care through their system and wiped out a large percentage of the population. This was a great setback to their civilization. That same comet led the Pleiadians into our system around 226,000 years ago. On several occasions, the comet had a dramatic effect on our planet. Earth was disturbed by the comet passing by too closely 10,215 years ago parting the waters of the Atlantic Ocean in the area where Atlantis had been. Again, 10,079 years o, 8104 BC, the comet passed by Earth and caused what is known as the Biblical Flood. At that time, the Earth Day was 40 hours long. Egypt was flooded and covered with water for many years, forcing the inhabitants to hide under the Great Pyramid. On two other occasions, 5984 BC, and 4930 BC, the comet caused tremendous storms on Earth. The cycles of the comet are rather erratic and unpredictable to a point. Sometimes it will come as quickly as 478 years and sometimes as long as 683 years, but always the average appearance figures out to be every 575 and a half years, which is very unusual and puzzling to the Pleiadians.
it is when the cycle is closer to the 575 and a half year that it passes the closest to the planet Earth. It is expected that the comet may return again in 2255 AD, the great comet passed by Earth about 3,500 years ago, once again creating a terrible storm in the Mediterranean and bringing the sleeping volcano of Santorini to life. Located on the island now called Thera, just 60 miles north of Crete, the great volcano erupted with a terrible force, causing a 200-foot-high tidal wave that rolled over Crete, Egypt, and Syria. At the time Crete was called Manoa, her people were the descendants of the Atlanteans. Many of them fled to safety as their homes went underwater. Manoa remains standing today, but the island of small Atlantis, which was situated close to the great volcano, slipped beneath the ocean and disappeared forever. The last passage was in 1680, which again caused great damage in the Mediterranean area. Where did the moon come from? Millions of years ago our moon was a fragment of a destroyed planet in another system. It was caught by the immense power of the destroyer comet and pulled into our system. The moon was part of a planet that is 4.5 million years older than the Earth. Theories that the moon was once part of the Earth can easily be dispelled by an examination of the minerals found there, which date back farther than any on Earth. How many people on Earth are in contact with the Pleiadians? In 1975 the Pleiadians stated that there are over 17,422 people on Earth in contact with Pleiadians. These are not physical contacts, even though there may be some isolated cases where they have had brief physical contacts. These contacts are the result of transmissions by the Pleiadians that can be picked up by Earth people. It is quite common to receive thought or ideas during sleep or daydreaming. It is part of the Pleiadian morality to not ever let the receiving party be aware of the origin of transmissions, for they feel this is interfering with our free will and our right to evolve on our own. It is also part of their decision not to interfere with a developing species. It should be noted that this information was given to us in 1975. I feel strongly that since then, many people may be aware of the origins of the transmissions and may even be in contact physically. For those who are aware of their contact with the Pleiadians, only a few come to the public with their ideas. As we are advancing more into the new age, perhaps more will feel the need to help out by going public with what they are learning. In non-physical contacts it is very easy to mix your own ideas, wishes, fears, and dreams with transmitted data. The human mind is capable of manufacturing almost anything, so great care and personal integrity must be exercised before relaying any information you may have to the public. Sometimes special people may be contacted for specific tasks that the Pleiadians have in mind. It should be noted that none of those chosen are in any way connected with the government, for this is directly against Pleiadian laws. Where is the closest planet to Earth with human life? There is a human race very similar to our own, located just five light years from Earth on a planet called Agart by the Pleiadians. Technically, they are only around 117 years ahead of us and are in the first stages of development of space flight. They have visited Earth on several occasions from a space station that they have out in free space. Even though they have developed space flight, they have not yet advanced to the point of breaking through to hyperspace. This means they cannot travel in time or traverse the huge distances of the universe in short periods of time. Even their trips to Earth take several years. They suffer from bodily pain when they travel in space, and they use drugs to help overcome this problem. Their ships are not yet equipped with energy protection screens of the type that can shield them from special radiations that penetrate their ships. They mostly come to Earth for food, taking with them seeds, plants, water, and other staples of life that they may need. Their home world is greatly overpopulated and supports over 23 billion people. Here on Earth we have built our population up from around 1.5 billion to over 5.4 billion people, just in the last 100 years. Are we headed for the same problem of overpopulation that may send us out into space for food? When will Earth have open contact with ETs? The Pleiadians have been watching and observing our progress as a society and have indicated that they may instigate an open contact for the people of Earth. This may be done around the year 2000 AD, with a race of beings not so different from ourselves. If this plan for contact comes to fruition, 
we will be contacted by radio and informed that they are approaching Earth and will be here in several months. At first there may be a lot of panic and fear, for we will have no idea who they are or why they are coming here. The thought of beings from another world strikes fear into the hearts of many people on Earth. After several more radio transmissions, people will begin to calm down and get used to the idea. Continue transmission will explain that they look similar to us, but have no hair, their bodies are thinner and taller, but with hands and feet like we have. They will arrive in a ship which is very large, white in color and oval shaped, something like a large egg. The landing will be in America, for they will have ascertained that here people will be mere receptive and less prone to panic and fear. It is not known for sure if the Pleiadians will continue to encourage this contact. As we approach the year 2000 AD, we can only wait and hope for the first radio transmission. Did the atom bomb dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima have any lasting effects on the planet? August 6, 1945 saw the end of World War II between the Japanese and the United States due to an atomic bomb which was dropped on Hiroshima, followed a few days later by another atomic bomb over Nagasaki. These blasts have had several lasting effects on the planet. To begin with, the explosions had a very small, almost undetectable effect on the rotation of the planet. It has also affected the normal orbit of the planet around the sun. Scientists have no idea of the far-reaching effects that these two actions will have on the planet. The magnetic poles of the planet have been shifted and continue to rotate. The North Pole has already moved into the Canadian Sea, and in 1,000 years it will be located on the western coast of Saudi Arabia at a point between Jeddah at the Red Sea and the Islamic town called Mecca. The South Pole is likewise shifting and is heading toward South America. The effects of these changes are not recognizable yet, except for some minor changes in weather, but over the long haul the entire planet will have been affected, since entire continents will become uninhabitable as the weather changes. All of the oceans will be affected, and millions of people will have to move out of Europe as it slowly becomes the ice-covered North Pole. In Russia, scientists have already discovered the shift in the poles and have properly calculated the direction of the shift and the effects on the planet. At the time of the explosions, large amounts of very high-frequency radiations were unleashed, which are having disastrous effects on the ozone belt around the planet. This is not normal electrical energy but radiation energy detectable in the ultraviolet field that is currently unknown to the scientists of Earth. This radiation normally mixes with the oxygen in the air and generates ozone. Normally 500,000 parts of air has only one part of ozone, but after the explosion, the ozone value increased 34 times for a short time, which amounted to 28 parts. Just after the blast, the ozone values decreased very fast. The consequence is that this imbalance will destroy the microorganisms, which are of enormous importance to the preservation of all earthly life. This effect will last for hundreds of years. By the year 3000 the North Pole will be located in Saudi Arabia near the city of Mecca. This is the end of Part 15. For more information about the Pleiadian Mission, please visit, thepleiadianmission.com. Again please visit, thepleiadianmission.com. Also subscribe and share this video. Let the whole world know the truth. Thank you for listening. Remember that knowledge is power. Please, don't be left in the dark. Please continue to part 16 in the next video.